This is the United States Energy Association Power Sector Podcast. I'm your host, Herman K. Trabish. I've covered the power sector since 2006, and I currently report for Utility Dive. My guest is former Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, or FERC, Chair John Wellinghoff, who was appointed by President Bush in 2006, and after being appointed Chair by President Obama in 2009, oversaw the critical orders that still define regional transmission operations and electricity markets. They include Order 1000, a pioneering attempt to facilitate regional transmission planning and cost allocation. Currently, John is CEO of International Power Sector Consultant, Grid Policy. We're going to talk today about the value and challenges of building a regional transmission system and market to unify the 38 independent areas from the Rocky Mountains to the Pacific Coast where there is no regional system. We're also going to talk about the importance and weaknesses of two initiatives, one by the Plains-based Southwest Power Pool, or SPP, and the other from the California Independent System Operator, or CAISO, Build a Western System. John, when you headed FERC, regional markets and transmission systems were already in place in the East. What made you realize the importance of regional transmission? Well, Herman, I'll tell you, what made me uh, think about it most was, you know, a group of commissioners from the Southeast actually came to FERC um, and they were from uh, Louisiana, um, from uh, the uh, other uh, Arkansas, other areas in that Southeast region uh, that are all, all concerned about energy uh, utility down there and how that utility was not providing uh, adequate access to independent uh, power marketers and independent generators who wanted to connect to their system. And they came to FERC and asked us to look into um, potentially um, requiring uh, the utility energy in that area to go into a retail transmission organization, uh, be part of it and be part of an organized uh, wholesale market. And we actually held a um, meeting in South Carolina uh, when I was chair with, with those uh, state commissions. It was a, one of the first FERC state uh, joint meeting, which uh, is authorized under the Federal Power Act for FERC to, uh, to is empowered to uh, hold those types of meetings. And we brought in Energy's uh, executives, put them under oath, had a great time cross-examining them and examining mm -hmm. uh, the uh, uh, activities that they were engaged in and determined at the end of that um meeting that we would fund a study, actually FERC funded it. I, I put up the money from FERC's budget to fund a study with an independent consultant, determine what could be the net benefits from having Energy join uh, a regional transmission organization independent uh, market. And uh, we, we commissioned that study, uh, ultimately got the study out to the state commissions and and the study, I believe, said that there would be something like um, seven hundred and eighty million dollars uh, in benefits to the uh, consumers in the region. And uh, you know, based upon those studies' results, each one of those commissions ordered Energy to join uh, an ISO RTO. And ultimately, the result of that was Energy joining MISO, the Midwest ISO, Mid Mid Midcontinental uh, Independent System Operator. Um, and I think uh, th the most interesting thing of all this is the fact that um, that those studies' results have been borne out over the years. I think if you go back and look at right. the uh, the data from MISO, MISO publishes this data an annually of the savings that have been achieved uh, by that uh, um, integration of energy into the system. They've saved you know far in excess. Of the amount of money right. that was, what was estimated in the study. It turned out even better than uh, the, the study sh suggested. And uh, and sadly, there's still a lot of uh, uh, lack of integration in the, in the Southeast, but there are barriers. Maybe we'll get to those if we have time. But I want to move now. You saw the benefits. So the question is, why does the West 
remains so balkanized? And does that mean a regional market and transmission across the West is less important or or more important? Well, the balkanization in the West is, is a historical artifact, uh, you know, as it is somewhat in the Southeast as well. But in the West, it's, you know, there was for many years low cost hydro in the Northwest and the far Northwest. Uh, and, and those entities certainly weren't interested in sharing uh, that low cost power with with everybody else that they wanted to keep wow. keep rate, rates as low as possible for the northwestern regions and that certainly you know made a lot of sense uh, ultimately uh, for them to do for a period of time although now the hydro there is less and less uh, a mm. important important factor in the total generation mix uh, because of the increasing loads uh, in the area. Uh, and also, you know, there were historically, you know, many balancing areas. I think there's 30, 38 balancing authorities in, in the West uh, that, that were, you know, very independent. The, the West itself has a very independent political uh, uh, spirit and um, attitude. Right. So, you know, take taking all these things together and, and taking the fact that, you know, California has a very um, unique structure for its independent system operator, the CAISO, the California uh, ISO, um, in that it is the only one of all the ISOs across the uh, United States, um, with the exception of Texas, that um, has direct um, control by the board and appointment by the board from uh, the state government in California, the governor of California actually mm. points, points the board of CAISO, and then they are confirmed by the California uh, legislature. Um, be, because of that governance structure, that's one that the rest of the uh, Western states, uh, you know, are, are, are somewhat uh, concerned about. Um, you know, those, mm. those factors have kept uh, the West uh, in, in somewhat of an independent perspective. And then the other thing that came along in the West that kind of caused everybody, especially the people in the Northwest, and actually I'd say the, the rest, rest of the West as well, um, back in 1999-2000 uh, was a little thing called Enron that you know yeah. kind of scared everybody away from these organized markets and and uh, and market structures so if you put all those things together you know the west had a, had, a, had a long sort of learning curve to go through to get more comfortable with uh, an organized market structure and an organized regional transmission organization uh, that would be under one uh, independent entity it was it was something that that it took them a long time to come to Right. But, but they, they are starting to come to it. Um, uh, and now SPP and CAISO have organized Western power producers, different groups of producers into real time energy markets. And they're moving toward day ahead energy markets. And both SPP and CAISO seem to have full regional system ambitions that they're working towards. Um, but studies have shown the benefits of organizing Western balancing areas into a single regional system are much greater than having two systems. So given all that, given the continuing concerns about California governance, given uh, close relationships by some utilities and power producers to SPP, do you see that the efforts are competing or can they somehow complement each other? Um, and And Will they benefit or impede Western regionalization? How does do you see all this? Do you see a pattern to all this playing out yet? Well, I mean, I mean, the pattern in part does come down to this uh, concern of the Western, the other Western states about the governance structure in California. I think naturally, wow. I think think they would ultimately join the California structure because it already exists. It is in the West already. It physically exists in the West. It has the um, the software infrastructure and the staffing and and all all the other components necessary to have a ISO RTO operate for the West, but for the governance and and you know there have been multiple um, uh, attempts in the California Legislature. Uh, to change the government governance. In fact, I testified, I think, in 2018, 2018 uh, on this issue. 
and each attempt has failed, unfortunately. So um, I, I don't see this resolved until that governance issue is resolved. And until that happens, I think there, you, there will be a split with some entities, uh, certainly all the California utilities and some utilities outside of California, like Pacific Core, that will be going with um, a, a California-centric regional market. Um, the, the EDAM, the uh, Energy Day Ahead market that that California is uh, about ready to stand up. Uh, I think Pacific Core is ready to join that. They've announced uh, in the meeting that I was at that they would move forward with that. But yet there's others that continue to be skeptical, that continue to say because of the governance, they will not join the California EDAM. And that includes BPA, uh, Bonneville, a power authority. So, you know, there is this split and I think that split's going to continue. There's others, you know, some of the uh, Colorado utilities have already joined SPP effectively. Uh, and so the, the SPP Markets Plus, which is the competing entity to the CAISO uh, expansion, uh, I think is going to have uh, some takers and will have some success as well. So, um, you know, whether we like it or not, whether it's the most efficient thing or not, I think because of the politics and because of these governance structure problems, I think uh, we're destined to have uh, a, a split uh, in the markets in the West for some time to come. Hmm. Uh, I, for our listeners, uh, we're the Power Sector Podcast is going to have a lot of other people coming on in the coming weeks from SPP and from the CAISO to talk about what they're trying to do, what they hope to do, and uh, expand on what you've been saying. But if, from what I've, from the reporting I've done, you're hitting the nail right on the head. There's a deeper issue here that I just want to spend a minute or two talking about, John. I don't have a lot of time, but part of the barrier to regionalization that I've been told that isn't talked about much is that some utilities own transmission and derive revenues from charging other utilities to use it. And then other utilities don't own transmission. And there's a, a competition or a, a, the ones that are getting the revenues don't wanna give that up to a regional system. Can you tell us just a little bit about whether that's a significant barrier? Uh, yes, and I think it is, Herman. I think ultimately uh, the way that utilities are compensated ultimately is a significant barrier. I mean, I would like to see, you know, ultimately utilities compensated for being more efficient and being able to provide additional throughput in their lines. I think we have extreme un underutilization of the transmission lines regionally in this country. And that underutilization is fostered by the fact that, that utilities are paid primarily on, you know, how much they spend in new CapEx um, and they're not really compensated to become more efficient and have more throughput in lines. I mean, it's something that we do in this country that's not done in many other parts of the world. In, in the UK and Europe, uh, transmission owners are not paid that way. They're not paid that way in South America and Australia. Uh, we, we really need to change the financial structure. And actually, I've got a proposal sitting before FERC right now uh, that they, you know, it's been sitting there for a number of years. It hasn't been considered to change the way uh, that uh, transmission owners are compensated. And I think we need to look at this very, very carefully, because if we don't do that, uh, we're not going to improve uh, the efficiency of the system the way that we need to improve it. And we're not to, going to achieve our goals of, of decarbonizing the grid uh, that we need to do if we don't improve the efficiency of the system. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of good news is there's a lot going on at FERC, your proposal leading them. Um, but that's all we have time to talk about today, John. I want to thank you very much uh, for describing your invaluable perspective on Western regionalization. And I want to thank everybody who took the time to check out the USEA Power Sector podcast. Don't forget to tell everybody you know about our quest for energy transition solutions. <laughs>